This is the iconic Space Needle located in the Emerald City of Seattle, Washington, HIPFIG's hometown. In this video, we'll provide information about the Seattle Space Needle. Information will include directions, public transport, parking, hours of operation, tickets, what to see and do, and of course, we'll share our own experiences and tips to make your visit here easier. Keep watching this video to get the full details about the Space Needle in Seattle. P.S. Don't forget to like us and subscribe to our HitFig travel channel. For more information on attractions and cities in the USA, watch HitFig's other videos on HitFig.com or our HitFig travel channel on YouTube. Welcome to HitFig. If you're a travel enthusiast, then join our community by subscribing to this channel. This is the Seattle Travel Guide for visitors to this majestically beautiful city. This episode is the Space Needle Travel Guide for visitors to Seattle, Washington. The Space Needle is the iconic landmark for Seattle, Washington. The Space Needle is a 520-foot observation tower shaped like a spaceship with 360-degree panoramic views of the city and the surrounding areas including Mount Rainier, the Puget Sound, and the Cascade and Olympic Mountain Ranges. The Seattle Space Needle is located at 400 Broad Street, Seattle, Washington on the Seattle Center campus along and next to the Chihuly Glass Museum and the Pop Museum. There are many ways to get here depending on where you're coming from. If you're coming from the Westlake Center area, you can take the Seattle Monorail which is located at the top of Westlake Center and it will take you directly to the Seattle Center where the Space Needle is located. A one-way ticket is $3 per adult with reduced fees for seniors, youth, and persons with Medicare cards and U.S. military with ID. Children 5 and under are free. Please pay using a credit or debit card or reloadable ORCA card. For your information, credit cards will be charged an additional 3.7% fee. Cash is not currently accepted. Seattle Center Monorail operates Monday through Friday, 9.30 a.m. to 8 p.m on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. and on Sunday 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can also catch the public bus number 32433 or the D-Line going north on 3rd Avenue and exit near the Seattle Center or ask your bus driver but most bus stops will involve at least a 10 minute walk to the Needle. By the way the D or Downtown Line is currently free and has the closest stop at 3rd and Vine Avenue. Taxis, Uber, and Lyft are readily available in downtown Seattle. Please check on your GPS or the King County Metro for best options from your location. We drove to the Space Needle. Parking near the Seattle Center or Space Needle is meter or paid parking. The Space Needle does offer valet parking at its entrance on Broad Street. There are several parking lots around the Seattle Center. The 5th Avenue North Garage at 516 Harrison Street, the Mercer Street Garage at 650 3rd Avenue North, which charge $6 per hour. Although it's a bit further away, the Theater Commons ADA parking lot on 2nd Avenue North and Mercer Street has the best deal at $15 for up to 12 hours. We parked at a meter, which was $4 for two hours, but currently all meters in downtown Seattle are set for 50 cents per hour, which will go up. Once we parked, we walked past the Museum of Pop Culture to the entrance of the Space Needle. The Space Needle is open from Monday through Thursday, 10.30 a.m. to 8.30 p.m., Friday to Sunday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily. The last tickets are sold 45 minutes before closing. You can purchase tickets online or in person at their ticket booth. The entrance fee is $35 per adult with reduced rates for seniors, youth, and Washington State residents with ID. There are also discounted rates if you buy a combo ticket with the Chihuly Glass Museum. If you plan to go to other paid attractions in the Seattle downtown area, it might be worth it to purchase the City Pass, which offers discounted rates. We've added a link on hipwick.com for your convenience. Once we purchased our tickets, we got in line. Our group was really excited to see what updates were put in the newly renovated Space Needle, and we were not disappointed. As we walked up the cemented ramp to get in line for the elevator, which would take us up to the top, the hallway along the way was lined with lit posters and presentations of the history of the Space Needle. The Space Needle was completed in 1961 for the World's Fair Expo in 1962, which was themed the 21st century. 
the Space Needle was to represent the future. Now that it is the 21st century, the Space Needle, in keeping with representing the future, completed its renovation in late 2018. This was HitFig's first visit to the Space Needle after its renovation. At the end of the hallway before the elevators, we took a free digital welcome picture, which you can access on the Space Needle app. In fact, there are several free digital photo ops once you're at the top of the tower. Once it was our turn to take the elevator up to the top, we walked into the elevator to the back by the glass windows as we wanted to see the view as we zipped up the elevator 520 feet in 41 seconds. Okay, just to let you know, we're going up at 10 miles an hour, up to 520 feet in the air. We're gonna be doing that in approximately 41 seconds. The building itself is 605 feet tall. Once you focus some signs, please take the time to actually stop once we got off the elevator at the top, we were totally wowed by the new renovated Space Needle. First off, it has breathtaking floor-to-ceiling glass viewing windows including an outdoor observation deck with open-air glass walls and sunriser glass benches. I'm always floored by how magnificent the views are from the Space Needle. I think sometimes I get confused by the rain and cold, and so a visit here always reminds me why Seattle is called the Emerald City, even in the winter. By the way, make sure to come here on a clear day if you can to see Mount Rainier to the south, the Puget Sound and Olympic Mountains to the west, Lake Union and the Cascade Mountain Range to the north, and Lake Washington to the west. We took lots of pictures and videos, of course, and on the outside deck, there are cameras which download to the Space Needle app, which you can take with the backdrop of downtown Seattle. There's also glass benches, which you can lean on, which give the appearance of you on the edge of the needle. When we were there, there are also Space Needle photographers who took pictures of us, which we also could download on their app. Winter or not, it's always windy on the outside deck, so please plan accordingly. Once we finished our time on the top floor, we walked down the Oculus, a wood, steel, and glass staircase which connects the upper level to the lower level. We noticed people taking pictures at the bottom of the staircase. There's a glass floor to take pictures lying down. This is a safe spot as this part does not rotate and it has a clear view of the bottom as well. From the bottom of the staircase, you'll encounter the loop, the world's first and only rotating glass floor. Be careful with your initial step onto it. It could be a bit disorienting for some people. From the rotating glass floor, you can see the downward view of the Space Needle and the surrounding area below. You can also choose to walk or just take a seat on the floor and watch the view as it rotates around. The rotating glass floor was a new experience and a fun way to enjoy the Space Needle. By the way, did you know that the Space Needle is a member of the World Federation of Great Towers? It's a worldwide organization of the tallest buildings in the world and there are 50 members. We've traveled um, a lot and gone to a lot of towers, but uh, Seattle Space Needle is definitely one of our favorite observation decks with lots of bells and whistles and of course the incomparable view. After many more pictures and videos, we ended our visit and took the elevator down and walked to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation on 5th Avenue, which is west across the street from the Pop Museum, and best of all, it's free, educational, and inspirational. You can combine with other activities at the Seattle Center, like Chihuly Glass Museum, Museum of Pop Culture, or MoPop as is known, or the Pacific Science Center. By the way, the best times to visit Seattle are late April through mid-October. The Space Needle is a must-do when in Seattle and it is highly recommended. The Seattle Space Needle will take at least two or more hours depending on your interest. Happy travels! Go to hipfig.com for more information or go to our HipFig Travel Channel on YouTube and be sure to subscribe for regular updates.